what is the best way to convert a social project into a profitable business? How do you, uh, to use the term that you hear a lot, do good while doing well? Part of my job is the external customers work. So this is how Ushihidi makes money. Um, so looking at, like, I also teach social um, coding for good over at um, Columbia. So part of the course there is how do you make money off this? How do you make this sustainable? It's not dirty to make money. It is bad to build a beautiful product and then have it fail because you can't keep it running. So ways you can make money. Um, consultancy, always a good way. Um, tra and training. Training comes part un under consultancy. Hosting sites for people. Um, you can host sites for people who can't necessarily manage them themselves. So hosting maintenance. Um, white labeling. Quite often you have large organizations who need software like yours. And if it works in a disaster, it'll pretty much work for, for anywhere. Um, but they need it branded for, as their own. Uh, and they'll need um, tweaks, twerks, things doing to it um, to make it work in their environment. So you can charge for the effort to do that. Um, and freemium. Uh, if you're you've got software that's open source that doesn't equate to a site that you're running. Remember, these are communities. So again, with the question of you know, how, how do you protect this thing, one way you protect this thing is to get a good following. Um, so you're looking at freemium as a possible, possible way of making money from that. Um, you don't have to be a non-profit. Uh, there's a trend coming through for social good for profits, which is quite interesting to watch. But on the other hand, you don't necessarily have to be a poverty-stricken nonprofit either. Um, for example, NFL makes billions of dollars but is a nonprofit. So there, there's room. I mean, the big thing is you have to make yourself sustainable. If you believe that much that this thing should happen, you have to make sure it keeps happening, even after your first grant runs out. So one of the things that we're trying with the Crisis Communicator is to be a consultancy that will provide training for disaster response communities or com community response teams and also provide the hardware if they should want it uh, or the software they can get and provide them training on how to use the software and the hardware so that they will be equipped to respond to disasters on their own and at the same time to provide the the software and the hardware as a service to NGOs so that when a disaster should happen, the two sides, the community, the response that grows right out of the area can communicate and have uh, equal footing with the outside response that comes in. And uh, yeah, so service provision and white labeling is something I haven't thought of. Uh, we haven't looked into other avenues yet, uh, but that's Definitely, I think Sarah's answer was very comprehensive and very helpful for me. Thanks. This is something that we're currently struggling with, um, trying to figure out how to um, yeah, make money while still ensuring that we're having a positive impact in the places that we're working. Um, and for the past two years, we've really focused on that consultancy model um, and trying to make money that way. Um, but actually, so we've done about, we've worked with approximately 10 partner organizations and have found um, over the course of the past two years that a lot of um, doing the consultancy that there's a lot of replication and um, a lot of um, like steps that are repeated again and again. So then we're trying to figure out what are the um, most valuable pieces of all of the pro individual projects that we've done um, and trying to pull those out and then hopefully build um, a, a technology, whether it's a platform or a toolkit that could be um, scaled and then brought to a variety of different partner organizations. And um, Sarah, as you said, we were, we've been playing around with um, you know, a freemium model or trying to figure out how to hold on to that special sauce is what we call it of what of what we do and how to try to um, make a little bit of, of profit on on our sort of special like what what can we bring to all of our different partner organizations so um, yeah it's something that I think any startup 
especially people in the social entrepreneurship space have to deal with all the time. Um, but yeah, going back to um, something that we talk about all the time is is um, when you first have a a project and you're thinking about turning it into a scalable business model is first just thinking about um, you know testing your idea quickly and being able to iterate on those ideas. Um, so really, you know, getting out into your target population, doing as many pilot projects as possible, and really evaluating those projects um, thoroughly so that you're having the greatest impact um, in those communities and really addressing the needs of uh, the people that you're trying to serve.